It's your returning champion, Elgin Tensity, aka Trapalapa Ding Dong. It's been a while since I've done a Q&A video, but I have some interesting questions today. So let me adjust my plus five classes of lawyering, do a little bit of assembling, and let's talk about this. Yo, tips to grow a channel? I think I answered this one years ago, but YouTube's changed a lot since then, so I'll update my answer. I don't recommend dedicating much time and effort to a YouTube channel, especially with the recent algorithm changes. I've heard of people being unsubscribed from channels or not seeing videos in the subscription feed once they're live. Some YouTubers claim they're losing subscribers right after they upload. The main thing I've noticed is reduced traffic from YouTube recommendations. It looks like YouTube is favoring channels that turn out long, high-quality videos every day, and only TV networks and other big companies have the time and resources to do that shit. These conditions are not conducive to growth if you have a small channel, so this is probably the worst time to build one. But if you insist on growing one, you have to identify who's important in your niche and get on their radar, whether it means collabing with them, impressing them enough to share your videos, or just getting them to talk about you. You can befriend them or piss them off, it doesn't really matter as long as you get your name out there. When I was on the rise, people thought I was just some asshole trying to pick fights until established fitness YouTubers started sharing my videos or responding to them in late 2013, early 2014. You also need to work the system so YouTube promotes your videos. That means you should make longer videos, 10 minutes at least, as often as possible. You should also maximize how long people watch your videos, which means they have to be interesting. If your content is a regurgitated Google result stretched out over 10 minutes, then nobody's gonna give a shit, you're just wasting your life. There's a lot more involved, like picking the right tags, thumbnails, and upload times. To learn more about those topics, I recommend checking out video creators on YouTube. What is the nature of your beef with, and then the rest is classified. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, because I haven't beefed with anybody all year. A beef is a prolonged period of hostility, two sides attacking each other. Thing is, nobody I've mocked this year has attacked me effectively. Projecting your insecurities isn't fighting back, it's giving up. It means you have no ammo loaded. Also, telling jokes isn't hostility. Just like throwing rotten food at the village idiot doesn't mean you hate the village idiot. So if you see me making fun of someone, it's just business to me. That's the nature of it. Daenerys Trapgarian, mother of gains and breaker of YouTube fitness hacks. Fave boss from Dark Souls 3. Pontiff gave me the greatest sense of accomplishment, but Soul of Cinder was the most fun, and the music gave me the most feels. Dylan asks, I noticed some of the old EIF episodes are now private on Dailymotion. Do you have an archive website or torrent link? For those of you who are new to the channel, I had to upload that series to Dailymotion for about a year because it was much harder for CrossFit and all my other marks to file bogus copyright claims there. A few months ago, Dailymotion demonetized all my videos there because of content ID and didn't give me a chance to appeal. So it went from not giving a shit about copyrighted content to overreacting more than YouTube does. Fortunately, I don't need Dailymotion anymore, and almost all of those videos are now on my side channel, Exercises in Futility Archive. You can find it in my featured channel section. Elgin, which YouTubers do you watch for entertainment, other than Grade? I watch rap battles on King of the Dot and URL TV. I watch Lewis Spears. I first learned about him from his savage trolling of SoFlo. I watch Luke Thomas, who shows me a lot of the dumb shit in MMA so I don't have to find it myself. H3H3 for the memes, and because he hates YouTube as much as I do. Critical, because monotone commentators have to stick together. The Watches TV, when I want to stare at timepieces I can't afford yet. In a Nutshell and Veritasium, aka Scott Bayo, the science guy. I don't watch fitness YouTubers, because they can't tell me anything I can't find on my own, and all their videos are aimed at beginners anyway. The vloggers are even worse. Drop-off packages, lift, eat chipotle. Call yourselves entrepreneurs when most of you would be homeless without your YouTube channels, because you don't own them. Repeat. If I need fitness community mints, then I turn to Logical Bro, Shadow Man, and Exposed TV. Non-negotiable. Related question, what is your opinion of Bradley Martin's videos? I don't watch his YouTube videos, but people tag me in some of his Instagram videos expecting me to roast him. What these dumbasses don't realize is that his gym antics, like squatting on a hoverboard or benching chicks instead of weights, are done purely for publicity. And they work. He doesn't actually do that shit in training. Every time I've seen him lift seriously, he's had really clean form. So in context, his videos are great. Don't be a dipshit and take them the wrong way. 
Your daughter joins CrossFit. What's your next move? I have no daughter, is what I'd tell her. Then I'd put her up for adoption. I'm tough, but fair. She wanted to work hard like Annie, and now she's living a hard knock life. Seriously though, I just lay down the law. Bill Gates didn't let his kids have iPods, so I won't let my hypothetical kids join CrossFit. Good parenting isn't complicated. Grade A Under A asks, Elgin, are you going to start a Patreon campaign, mate? Patreon makes the most sense for full-time content creators, especially those with time-consuming or expensive content to produce. I don't do YouTube for a living, but even if I did, I could live very comfortably on my ad revenue and sales. Also, my videos cost almost nothing to make. I don't have a staff, I don't have to buy materials. Patreon just doesn't seem like a good fit for my channel. Vince G doesn't even have a Patreon, and he's still trying to log into the POG account. I'd rather expand my store and explore other options. I crafted this computer in large part because I want to start streaming on Twitch again on days I don't upload YouTube videos, so most days. Until that happens, if you want to support me, then turn off adblock when you watch my videos, and buy my apparel or my affiliate products at infiniteelgintensity.com. While you're at it, you might want to click the bell icon so you get notifications when I upload. I've heard that doesn't always work, but it's worth a shot. By the way, Grade told me to reserve my custom URL on Patreon in case imposters try to take pledges, so don't get any bright ideas. If it's not linked in my description box, then it's not mine. A question from Ethiopian Pride. I was sipping on some Yerga Chef not too long ago. Elgin, would you rather have Myko Tren tie you up to the frog sexually while feeding you duck eggs, also sexually, or cut Milord's toenail with your teeth while he poses naked after working out? I'm gonna have to adjust my glasses for that one. That hypothetical gone sexual. First, you didn't specify who Milord is. Let's say you're referring to, I don't know, this guy as Milord. You also didn't specify which teeth, so I would cut Milord's toenail with my saw teeth. That's how we do pedicures at infinite health intensity. I'll need a few dozen blades. If you've ever seen his toe, you'll know why. He'll be posing naked after a workout on the other side of a curtain that hides him from view, and I'll be wearing a gas mask to protect me from the smell of rotten cheese. Like the video and subscribe to the channel now. Everybody drugs everybody Everybody tries the gear somehow Something in my lips just blow me My sometime was now